Praise God. And uh, on behalf of Pastor Ness, we welcome you. And uh, I'm not Pastor Ness, but, you know, praise God, we're all together in the house of the Lord. Praise God. So let's, let's worship the Lord together, for that is what we are created to do. Amen. Hallelujah. The, uh, the Bible says in Psalm 100, 100, it says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him into His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Hallelujah. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. For the Lord, He is good. His mercy is everlasting. And His truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm 
Lord, your name and your name alone is worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. We thank you, Lord, for how you created us to praise you and how praising you lifts our spirits. Lord, we pray that your goodness would show and shine through us as we live out our lives. Lord, may the people that we come into contact with just sense the joy that doesn't come from our circumstances, but that comes from you. Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us into your family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hello. Hallelujah. Continue in that attitude of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, I'd like to wor uh, welcome everybody here, and especially if there's any newcomers, raise up your hands. Hallelujah. Praise God, brother. We welcome you, brother. Thank you for coming. And for our uh, internet. Um, and, uh, yes, hallelujah. Internet family, uh, we welcome you as well. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes uh, words just don't flow when, you know, you're in front of the camera, but praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A few announcements. Uh, the, uh, I, I don't see it here, but uh, uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, prayer, prayer chain, okay? Monday to Saturday, 7 p.m. Please, if you, if you have any uh, prayer request, we have a prayer, uh, prayer uh, card here. Fill it out, and uh, we'll all pray together uh, during that time. Praise God. And at the same time, you can join us. Amen? Hallelujah. For uh, daily virus versus verses, it's our daily encouragement. Please watch them in our YouTube or in our GLF, uh, NJ.org. Praise God. And uh, I think that's pretty much all that we have for the announcements. Um, I stand here in, in, in your presence, you know, knowing that part of our worship is giving. Luke 6.38, it says, Give, and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Amen? Some way, somehow, that particular chapter in Luke, you know, it's, it's more than just giving. Amen? It's... It talks about other things. Um, it talks about not being judge, uh, judgmental, uh, being more loving, okay, being more forgiving, and then of course part of that is giving. Giving is a form of worship. Amen. Praise God. So, Father, as we give our tithes and offerings to you, Lord. We thank you, first of all, that you are the giver of all things, Lord God. And so we give to you our thanksgiving through our giving, Lord God, knowing that you are the God of everything. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Today, you know, our, our, our speaker does not need any kind of introduction my brother Vic, I've known him for a little bit. Praise God. Come, brother, and give us the message. Thank you, brother. Well, I give, first of all, I give all glory 
all honor, all praise to our Father, to Jesus, for what he has done for us. I just praise him that I'm here. I'm praising him for the opportunity to be able to speak today. He's definitely laid something on my heart for the congregation and the viewers. So just get ready. Just buckle up and get ready. I see so many friends out there. My friends that have come here today, you don't know how much that means to me. Actually, your prayers, I know you've been praying. So I'm telling you, this is going to be some service. You believe that? Okay. Before we start uh, the word, I have a song that has resonated me for this, and we're going to play it. And um, you might have heard it before. People need the Lord. It's an unbelievable song. And that song is um, what is basically what I'm going to minister on, says it all. People need the Lord. So watch this intently. Get it down in your spirit, and I'll come back and give you the word of God. Well, hallelujah. That, that the song says it all for me. I don't know about you, but that's it. You know, love thy neighbor as yourself. Be concerned about other people. You know what? We had a little thing in children's church way back when. I mean, way back when. About 35 years ago, I was doing children's church. And um, we had a, a word. It was J-O-Y. J is for Jesus. O is for others. And Y is for yourself. So there it is. That, that'll get you to joy. That's where the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. I am excited about this today. At the end of this uh, sermon, toward the end, I'm going to have a surprise for you. And the surprise will be my divine appointment at a Mets at a Phillies game, believe it or not. So be uh, ready to hear that in a while. And um, until then... Uh, we're going to go over uh, divine purpose, and we're going to go on divine appointments is going to be the context of the sermon, okay? So here we go. Glory to God. Once again, Lord, we do give you the glory. We do give you the honor. We do give you the praise. Lord, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't even be here today. So we thank you, Lord, that you have a mission for us. And I know your mission for us, Lord God is to think about other people and to bring other people to the Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your love that dwells up in us on a daily basis as we serve you. Bless your message, Lord, in Jesus' name. Our divine purpose. When Jesus talked to his 11 disciples after his resurrection, all right, there was 11 after the resurrection, right? This is what he told his disciples. And people, this is what he's telling us. Hear up. The Great Commission is what he gave us. Jesus gave us the Great Commission, all right, for all of his followers. We're his followers, right? In Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 16, King James Version, and it goes like this. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but... He that believeth not shall be damned. We have a responsibility. Do you feel that? You feel that in that scripture? People need the Lord. And in Chronicles chapter 16, verses 9a, it says, for the, hold on one second here. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. The eye, I should have brought my glasses up. Eyes, I should have brought my glasses up. Okay. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro the earth. All right? I didn't plan that. The whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them. Are we them? Them whose hearts is perfect toward him. He can't use us unless we're sold out to him. What does he tell us? Do you remember that lawyer in the, uh, in the New Testament 
try to trick Jesus. He said, what is the most important commandment? And Jesus says, I tell you this, most important commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. All right? And the second commandment is likened unto the first, to love your neighbors yourself. When we have the love of the Lord welling up in us and it's overflowing, yes, those people are going to want to know what is that hope that lieth within you. All right? They're going to want to know. And thank God that they will want to know by our life. And we just point them right to Jesus, all right? Someone pointed you to Jesus, and I got news for you. The one that pointed me to Jesus sitting in the, the fifth row back with his wife today, and I praise God for him. Okay. And that, that's a long time ago, Brother Jack. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Okay. <laughs> all right. And in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 through 16, it says... But if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy ye are, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Verse 15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready, always, be always ready, okay, to give an answer to, to everyone that asks you of the reason of the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. You know, when I first got saved, I probably, yeah, I got the Lord. I probably tried to beat people over the head with the Bible. You ever been there out there? That's not the way to go. You got to love them. You got to love them where they're at. All right. And verse 16, verse 16 says, having a good consciousness. See, when you're living for the Lord, you can go with a good conscience because you're living right. And you keep a short account of any sinning that you do, right? that whereas they speak evil of you, see, they're going to look at you. Because listen, if you're right, they're wrong. Right? If you're right, they're wrong. And all their life, if they've been going wrong, they don't want to get right. So you know what? Live the life before them. By your good works, right? Glorify your Father who's in heaven. All right. Going on still with verse uh, 16. So having a good conscience is that whereas they speak evil of you, as an evildoer, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you, your good conversation in Christ. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, we get from him and then we give. I was going to bring a glass and I was going to keep on pouring water in that glass. And that's, that, that's probably an example that has been shown before. But if we have a glass, this clear glass here, guys, and we keep pouring the water in it and we keep filling the water... And there's no room in that, that glass of water for, except for water. What's going to happen? Then there's going to be an overflow wherever you go. All right? That's going to be an overflow. But you've got to keep that glass filled with Jesus. You've got to keep that fast. You've got to keep hungering and thirsting after righteousness. All right? And you will be filled when you're hungering and thirsting after righteousness. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17, it says... Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us. See, that's the word. He has reconciled us, right? Reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe, right? He's the one that was able to reconcile us to God the Father. And hath given to us, all right, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, all right? Now, that's what we have been given. So we have responsibilities. You know, I was thinking about it this morning in the wee hours, and when I was thinking about it, I said, you know what? We need to be working for the Lord. Working for the Lord, right? We just shouldn't be just sitting in the pew. Come on. We should be working for him. Look what he did. All right? So we, we you know, we, we need to be about our father's business. All right? You know, it, it, the days are desperately wicked. Okay? The fields are white unto harvest. So let's be mindful on a daily basis. Okay? All right? Maybe we shake our, shake our spirit up a little bit more. Do a little bit more than what we've been doing. But all of it in the love of Jesus Christ. Okay, and it will show. Verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, 
not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath, con and hath commanded unto us the word of reconciliation. Okay? So we are reconcilers. You know, we're ministers. We're ministers of reconciliation for Jesus Christ. And uh, I thank God that we are. You know what? Being a Christian is an exciting life. Can I get a witness out there? Gee, come on. You know, I could sing, but I don't want to sing. Sometimes Brother, Brother James sings, and when he sings, I love you, Brother James. And uh, did you get that one? <laughs> but it's all in the spirit. That's good. But anyhow, uh, I was going to say, the joy of the Lord is my strength, and I was going to go on that song, but uh, maybe we'll get Sister LaBarbs up here later to sing. Okay, anyhow, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Okay, here we go. Now we're continuing on. Now I'd like to talk about divine appointments. And you know what? Can someone get my glasses? <laughs> They're sitting right there. They're not there. Okay, all right, well, oh, Jesus, Lord help me. There you go. Yeah. I'm telling you what, I, I don't know if that's, I don't know, I don't know, if, I don't know, I guess it's good that you're laughing. Laughter doth make like medicine to the soul, right? So yeah, good, keep laughing. Hey, listen, I'm 73 years young and I'm living forever. Oh, glory to God. Now I'd like to talk about the divine appointments, okay? And before I share the divine appointments that I had that involved um, four men, iron, iron men, iron, uh, iron fellows, work on the iron in, the, in uh, Philadelphia, iron workers, all right? At the, at the Mets at Philadelphia game at April 7th, okay? Let's look at Jesus' divine appointment with a Samaritan woman. You all remember that one, Jesus' appointment at Jacob's well? Okay? And there's a lot of scripture there, and it's all in chapter 4 of John. But uh, I wanted to take out, I wanted to just go for John 4.4. 4. Jesus was on his way to Galilee. All right? He was going somewhere, right? And in John 4.4, 4, it says, And he must needs to go through Samaria. See? He felt by the Holy Spirit that there was a divine appointment waiting for him. So that's where he was going. He was going somewhere else to Galilee, but he chose to go to Samaria, all right? For two reasons he went there. First of all, it was closer, which I found out with a little research there. And secondly, to obey his divine orders, all right? Divine orders. You know, simply put, you might wake up in the morning or whenever and get going and you feel a strong urge to go see Betty over on Main Street in Tom's River. That's the Holy Spirit. You know what I found out in my time of being a Christian? If it's not bad, it's probably the Holy Spirit. You know, if it's something good. And if it's not, if it's not good, then you know it's not the Holy Spirit. But we have to be sensitive. And if we're not sensitive, we can't hear anything. That's why we got to renew our mind daily. Renew your mind daily. Grow, grow in the grace and the knowledge of Christ Jesus on your most holy faith. Don't be having milk when you're like a 30-year-old Christian. You should be eating some porterhouse steaks, some good meat, okay? Well, you like filet mignon, half filet mignon, that's okay. Okay, so here we go. A Samaritan woman at Jacob's well, okay. Here we go. And he must needs to go through Samaria. Right? And we told you why. His divine orders. He followed that. Jesus was tired. And he was sitting up on the well. And then the Samaritan woman came out. The girl. And she thought it was a little peculiar that Jesus would be there sitting on the well. Because they had nothing to do with the, uh, the, the Jewish people. They had nothing to do with the Samaritans. Okay? So... He went there because it was a divine appointment for him. So when she came out, he basically convicted her of her sins. She had had five husbands and five divorces, and the man that she was with wasn't her husband then. So he convicted her in her spirit, all right? And when she got convicted, 
she said, how are you, how are you going to get that water? That's a deep well down there. How are you going to get down there and, and get water? And Jesus basically says, I will give you water. And when I give you my water, you're not going to thirst anymore. That's everlasting water. That's water that enriches your soul. That's water that refreshes you. Refreshes you. Hallelujah for his water. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you for what you've done for us. Lord, we just we don't want to take for granted what you've done for us, Lord God. We just praise you today. We love you today, Jesus. You are worthy of praise. You're worthy of honor. You are worthy of glory. Glory unto your name. And as I said, you could read the, the account in uh, chapter 4 of John. So what happened was the men had gone away. His disciples went away to get food. And by the time that they came back, that little Samaritan girl, she was shaking down everybody in the neighborhood, telling them about Jesus, bringing them to the Lord. So do you think that she got saved? Yeah, she got saved. And when she got saved, she went out looking for people to share. She was so thrilled. She was so thankful. Remember when you first got saved that the grass was so green that I'd never seen it? For myself, I didn't know grass was so emerald green and the sky was so blue. But he opens your eyes, not only spiritually, but he just opens your eyes to everything. And you know what the greatest thing about, one of the greatest things about being Christian is the liberty that you have in your spirit. Because he came to set us free. And he did set us free. And he have a liberty in the spirit. We have a liberty to love. We have a liberty to be the husband or wife uh, to our mates. We have uh, the liberty to be the father or the mother to our children who we're supposed to be. Train them up in the way they should go and they won't depart from it. But that's, that's what we get from Jesus. So Lord, we continue to thank you here today. Now we're going to go to um, my divine appointment. We're getting there. I'm not going to ask you who's a Met fan or who's a Philly fan because it's really irrelevant. But who's a Met fan here? Uh, okay. Hey, Phillies, I love you too. I'm all things, all men, whereby we win them to Christ, right? All right. So who's a Phillies fan? Okay, good deal. There's the Phillies fans back there. All right, I guess we can have some. I never know if it's going to be a serious message or a mix of a message. And it looks like it's a mis mix of a message here, but the Lord knows what he's doing. I just, I just ask him to work through me how he does. All right, so just before I share about my divine appointment with four iron workers at the baseball game, I just want to expand very shortly as to what a divine appointment is. Okay, is that up there, brother? Yeah. A divine appointment is a moment in time in which you encounter God. You come across a person or a group that is significant in God's purposes for you. Or a circumstance takes place that you realize, realize has been set up by the Spirit. So that's a divine appointment, right? It is a miracle moment. You may have entered a divine appointment you might know it, but often a divine appointment is unexpected. It is only during or after that you become aware of its significance. You know, a great prayer, if you want to do it, it's a great prayer. You wake up in the morning, Lord, put someone in my path today that I could minister your love to. Put someone in my path today that I could bring them to you, Lord. And you want to know something? Just the way that this says. After it's over, oh my goodness, he answered that prayer. I talked to whoever and, and was able to share Jesus with him. The eyes of the Lord are going to and through the earth looking for someone, someone to show himself strong through. And he's looking at someone with a, a pure heart, clean hands, all right? And that's what he's looking for. And you know, when we're living for the Lord, that's who, that's who he could use. And he'll use you. He'll use you. You know, the, the, labor, the uh, harvest is uh, plentiful, but the laborers are few, right? The fields are white unto harvest. They're har I'm telling you, with all this pandemic and everything going on right now, you think people aren't ready to receive the Lord? He's pouring the Spirit out. 
We don't know, you know, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We know who holds our hand. But the unsaved don't know who holds their hand. That's why they're having all kinds of medical problems and, and uh, you feel bad for them. Well, you feel bad for them. Love them where they're at, which has been said here many times by Pastor Nestor. That's a great phrase. R love the people where they're at, okay? And uh, that's what we do. And we love them with the love of the Lord. All right, now it's time for that divine appointment. <clears throat> so, this brother in the fourth row there, Joey, calls me up. Vic, we're going to go to the Mets-Phillies game, and we're going to go with two other brothers in the Lord. Uh, I want to take you there. Well, first off, after I asked him two or three times that I want to pay for it, and he said no, I learned a lesson after the second time. That's okay, let him pay for it. So thank you, brother. I really appreciated that. So all seriousness. So we get there, and we're watching the game. And the Mets are pitiful. It's the sixth inning of a nine-inning game. And in the sixth inning, by the time we got to the sixth inning, the Mets had bases loaded. If you know anything about baseball, they had bases loaded three times. Zero runs. See, the baseball fans are really keying up. I, I couldn't stand it anymore. I was getting so frustrated. But what? It was the Holy Spirit setting up my divine appointment. Listen up. So with that, I see four big guys, about eight rows down in front of us, Phillies hat, one of three Phillies hats and one Met hat. And they're walking by me because I'm on a, on a chair right next to the aisle where you'd walk by. So, you know, Vic, Brother Vic's a little different than most people. We're all different. You know, every snowflake's different. Every fingerprint's different. But I'm different, okay? So they come by, and I said, hey, any of you going to Tom's River? If you're going to Tom's River, I'll give you 20 bucks to take me there. That really happened. You're saying, what? So, Caleb, is Caleb here today? And I guess Caleb didn't make it. He was going to try to make it. Caleb was the one that was going to Tom's River. And you see the name Caleb, right? Well, yeah, Caleb was born again. So I get with Caleb and these three other guys, Frank, Jimmy, and Lamont, okay? Soon as I apologized to Joe and the other two that I, I had to go, like I just, but it was a divine appointment. I didn't realize it then. What are you talking about a divine appointment? So what happened right away, oh my God, I started talking about Jesus to them. Soon as we got up underneath, not even out of the stadium, talking about Jesus, especially when I realized that Caleb was a Christian. So there's two of us with three guys that didn't know the Lord. And they're asking me questions and asking me questions and, and the Holy Spirit's firing back with the wisdom and what needed to be said to them. And one guy came and showed me his uh, tattoo of St. Anthony. That was his attesting that he was a Christian. So I didn't, you know, say anything about that. But that's, that was his Christian. You know, there's a lot of people, people, that have a cross around their neck. But did that cross get to their heart? Think about that. You know? So that doesn't necessarily mean that you're saved. I would hope that it does, but, you know, it's all a matter of the heart. So these fellas all parked, because they all work right in that area in Philadelphia. There was four, like four different guys, including Caleb, and they all parked their cars at one particular place. So before we got to the three other cars were all piled in, big guys, I mean big, and they let me sit in the front seat. That was so nice of them. I appreciate that. And they were all in the back. So, I mean, a mile a minute, I'm giving them the word of God as the Holy Spirit is speaking through me. I'm hit, you know, if you were talking baseball today, but I'll say the Holy Spirit, you ever know a mitt that you catch knuckleballs with? Come on, Stanley, I know you that. So a big knuckle, it's like I had a big Holy Spirit knuckleball catcher's mitt to catch everything that they would give me. And by the grace of God, we were riding for a while because it was a while until we got underneath the Ben Franklin Bridge. 
I felt to tell them, I said, you know, guys, listen, today, when we get to the cars, if you're really sincere about this, because they were, I mean, all these questions are going back and forth. It really seemed like they were really wanted to know. Divine appointment set up by God. Okay? So we got to the car, and when we got to the car, we all were still in the car, and I was in the front, and I says, okay, if you guys, see, God could see your heart. If you're really sincere, and you want to get right with God, well, gentlemen, today is your day. I could lead you in a very simple prayer, and if you repeat it from your heart, God's going to hear you, and you'll be what they call born again. And I think I even gave him a little thinking about that, but talking about it. But unless you have the spirit, you really probably can't understand it. But anyhow, so I pray we get done. You guys, you just did it. If your heart was sincere right now, you guys are born again. I say go ahead and tell people what happened today here and uh, get yourself your Bible out and uh, read in the book of John. Start there. Uh, with Acts, you know, what, look at chapter 3 and verse 3 and John 3, 16. And, and it was just, a, it was a glorious, glorious time. But that was a divine appointment. Wow. Can you imagine? I'm leaving my good buddy who paid for my ticket. Not only that, but he's my friend. And I'm going. But I apologized to them before I left. And then what I did before not too long after I, we prayed together for salvation for the, uh, the fellows, um, I called him and let him know. And he said, oh, I see, Vic, it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit did what happened with you. And so I'm glad you called me. So with that, now I'm with Caleb, and Caleb is saved, and Caleb's the one that's going to take me to Tom's River. And as Caleb's taking me to Tom's River... He needed a, 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 another gift aside from um, salvation, all right? And it was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we talked about that. And when we got to my house, in front of my house, I prayed with Caleb to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's almost like he didn't know anything about it. So I opened his eyes up to that by the Holy Spirit, that it was available, okay? And um, he, didn't, he didn't do what's needed to do when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, Evidence of speaking in other tongues. But you know what? One plants, one waters, God gives a crease. And also by faith, sooner or later, I'm believing that he'll get that. What, what a, this Caleb, what a, what a gentle giant. My God. Like about this big. I mean, unbelievable. And what a gentleman. You know, the Holy Spirit could tame the wildest person. You know, think about how he does that. And that's why it's just amazing, right? It's amazing grace. It's amazing grace what he could do. He could change, turn us around. So anyhow, I invited him in, introduced him to my wife, Seal, and gave him some of my famous Spanikopita Greek spinach pie and a bottle of water and sent him on his way. He was supposed to be here today. I'm sure something came up, but uh, that's a divine appointment. So you know what? It's there for all of us. And, um, you know, God... <laughs> We, we know that we want to live for the Lord. So as long as you're living right for the Lord, you know, he's ready to use you. His eyes are going to and through the earth looking for someone to show himself strong to, right? So um, that's it. This, this is what God put on my heart. And it all happened at that uh, Mets-Phillies game. And you never know where. You never know where what's going to happen. To think that I'm sitting there, any of you going to Tom's River, I'll give you $20 if you take me there. Can you imagine that? Think about that, people. That's like crazy. But it's crazy good. When you're open, you don't know. You know, I don't know what, it, what you would call, uh, you know, a lot of what happened. It was a divine appointment for sure. But you know, I'm looking for these signs shall follow those who believe on my name. In my name, they cast out demons, which I have never done. Um, pray for the sick and they'll be healed, okay? These signs, right? These signs, these signs. So let's be hungering and thirsting after righteousness so we could be filled. 
so we could give to those that are around us. And um, let's just be what He wants us to be. You know, before we were born, you talk about purpose. He had a purpose for each and every one of us. He knew us when we were in our mother's womb, right? All right? So he, He's got the plan for us. And if you're here today, all right, some of you might be riding high in the Lord. Some of you might not be riding so high in the Lord. But I want to have a call from your seat for maybe a rededication to the Lord or salvation to the Lord because He's worthy. He's so worthy. Oh man, is He worthy. He saved my mother, at, uh, se saved my mother in her late 70s, saved my alcoholic father at 75. And you know why He did it? Because of love. They saw the change in my heart. And they wanted to know what was, what was that hope that lies within you. God's amazing. I mean, how could, how could anybody? Peter said, where would I go but to you, Lord? You have the answer of everlasting life. And I echo exactly what Peter says. So if you'd all stand, I'd like to have an a, a, a altar call at your seats. Once again, it's the sincerity of our heart. Okay? And that's what it is. So if you feel like you need to pray, just follow after me. And we're going to pray for salvation and rededication. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for what you've done for us. And Lord, if we have done any wrong to you, and if we have been in a bad state with you, we want to be, uh, we want to have, we want to um, rededicate our lives today. Lord, take our heart and make it and mold it in what you want us to be. We thank you, Lord, that you're a forgiving God. And we know, Lord, that with a sincere heart, Ask it to rededicate our lives to you, that you will hear our cry, and you will envelop us and live through us. And we ask that in Jesus' name. And if there's anyone here that needs to receive the Lord for the first time, repeat this prayer. Father in heaven, come to you in the name of Jesus. And if I've never really accepted you, Jesus, as my Savior, I want to do it now. I want to ask you for the forgiveness of my sins and ask you to save my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I just want to thank everybody for coming. First off, I want to thank the Lord because I sense the Lord in this. I, the Lord was all over this. And you want to know what? Working together. Everybody has been praying for this. You've been praying for this. You've been part of this, all right? And that's what it takes, all working together, right? We are the family of God, right? The family of God. And I thank God that I'm in this church body, and I just praise God for, for the pastor of this church. I praise God for everyone in this church. And if you all... Um, are looking for a church. I'm not telling you to leave where you're at, but this church is very biblical. You want to know why? It says you'll know those who are mine by their love one for another. And that's what's here. And that's why I've been here for quite a number of years. And I thank the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Ben? Remain standing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Bick. Divine appointments. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's be true to the word, to the Lord, and you just be obedient to him, to his to his will. Hallelujah. Let's raise, let's raise up our hands for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Shalom. Amen.